And here's the thing. In these moments of, of fear and in, in of the unknown, what we can do out of fear, right, is we can attach ourselves to our solutions and we just get more attached to them and we just basically start defending them louder and louder. Like, look, no, here's my $250 leather, like beautiful, versatile travel leather handbag. Like, you need this. Don't you need this, right? We can hang on to our solution out of a sense of fear or... We can channel our inner beginner and we can ask the really, really brave, scary question of what is the most relevant problem that my customer, that my community, that my team, whatever it is that you're working on is facing right now before jumping to the solution. And that takes a lot of two things. One, curiosity and two, empathy. And when we were facing what y'all, I'm I'm not kidding you, felt like potential death of, of our company. Like we did not know if we were going to survive this pandemic. And it was so bad that it almost gave us a sense of freedom of like, you know what, if we're going to go out, like we're going to go out swinging and we are not going to say we didn't try, right? But instead of grasping onto our solution and just trying to make that work, what we ended up doing is we backed away completely. We turned off our computers. We turned off our phones. We didn't think a thing about the how or about the solutions. All we did is we thought about our customer and we just imagined her life that had changed completely virtually overnight. Okay. What we did is we thought, okay, you know what? Her husband just lost her job, his job. He is still, um, so he's like now at home. She's still employed, but now she's like working remote. She has three kids under the age of eight. And um, all of a sudden, overnight, her and her husband have become like homeschool teachers. And she's trying to hold down her like full-time job while her kids are at school. They've lost a massive amount of their income, right? And so they're freaking out about that. She, as the weeks go by, is becoming increasingly lonely and isolated. And those things, those little tiny luxuries and delights that she used to have in her life, right? She would stop, you know, maybe once a week on the way to the office, get a little lavender latte, or maybe once a month go get a mani-pedi. None of that was happening anymore. Those little luxuries were completely gone. Um, she's feeling increasingly just lonely and isolated. The book club, the the colleagues, the other moms in the neighborhood, right? Like there's this sense of loneliness and this disconnection to her purpose. And we really just like sat in it, you guys. And we let ourselves feel her problems. And we started asking this question of where is she today, right now, in the midst of this global pandemic? And how can we serve her? What we do well here at Seiko Designs, which is inspiration and luxury and connection in a way that meets her needs, not that she had yesterday, but the needs that she has right here, right now, today. And we really let ourselves sink into that before we started thinking about the solution, right? And this this concept of little luxuries started to emerge. Maybe right now she doesn't need the new $250 travel handbag. Although, spoiler alert, I will tell you what we learned is that women do shop during a pandemic, which is awesome, but we didn't know that back in March. Um, And we started thinking, and then all of a sudden it kind of occurred to us, like, isn't it interesting that our favorite little luxury in our family is just beautiful, really well-made, small batch roasted, pour over coffee the luckiest woman on planet earth. My husband makes pour over coffee every single morning. And we're like, isn't it interesting that Uganda is one of the best coffee growing climates in the world? Um, And that the community that we care so deeply about is so impacted by this industry. And, And we slowly started putting the pieces together of this kind of solution that we kind of had an interesting access to, but really keeping her and her problem and how we could serve her at the forefront of our mind. And this completely new brand and new entity called Together Coffee was born. Um, During those little breaks in her day, every morning when she starts out, can she roast a cup of coffee and be reminded of the same things that she felt when she opened her closet and put a beautiful cashmere shawl on, right? Like I'm a part of this story and this impact of women and girls across the globe. And I'm making a difference in these small little ways throughout my day. And I'm also having this experience of luxury. Um, Y'all, we are, you know, less than 
gosh, I, I don't know, it's been what, six months, 10 years <laughs> since March of 2020. And I am so proud to say that Seiko Designs and Together Coffee, it's thriving. Um, we are up over 100% in revenue and profitability. Our global team is thriving throughout our global pandemic when the most vulnerable people in supply chains are most negatively impacted. I am so proud to say that we've maintained 100% of our employment. And that didn't happen because we just had a really good solution that could weather any storm. It happened because we channeled our inner beginner and we got really courageous and curious about saying, okay, let's not think right now about what we have to offer, but instead let's get really empathetic and let's get really curious and let's be problem finders. Mm -hmm.